Hello and welcome to the Tuesday, January 21st, 2020 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. We got a couple of items of leftover from last week that I would like to cover. One is sort of a new twist on these sextortion emails. Now, we have seen them, of course, a lot last year. However, late last year, just before the holidays, there were a number of stories that suggested that ring cameras, the security cameras that have become quite popular, are easily hacked. Well, it looks like these sextortion scammers are now sort of jumping on that bandwagon instead of claiming that your laptop camera was compromised they're now actually going after the nest camera note that they didn't actually compromise it it's just like all the other sextortion emails there is nothing behind these emails they're just making the claim what's also a little bit odd and different here instead of actually providing a lot of detail within the email about how much to pay and how to pay they just give you login credentials for a Proton Mail email account and ask you, hey, log into this email account. And that's where we will show you how much to pay and how to pay, which usually evolves around sort of $500 in Bitcoins. And of course, one malware gang that's always pretty up to date when it comes to the latest and greatest email ruse to get people to install their malware is Emotet. And the latest trick they're using is an email that sort of follows the sextortion game in claiming that your computer is hacked. And then of course you have to open this special Word document to figure out how to get it cleaned up. And they typically ask something like 50 or a hundred dollars to get that accomplished but the real trick here is that when you open the word document of course you will have to enable macros and then they will install additional malware on your system so if it wasn't hacked in the first place well Emotet will make sure that their threat is real and apparently some LastPass users had a bad weekend in that they weren't able to access their passwords. Well, these days you can't really live without one of these password managers and LastPass, certainly not a bad choice necessarily. But of course, entrusting your passwords to a cloud service is not just a problem with possible security issues, but also probably more likely with availability issues as these users found out. According to LastPass, this was due to a bug in a recent release and only affected a very small number of users. Kind of a little bit unsettling that uh, this statement apparently only was released after the weekend. Uh, so users who were affected were pretty much without their passwords over the weekend. So just make sure that you do keep a local copy of important information like this. And when it comes to embarrassing vulnerability in home-based networking equipment, this time it's Netgear's turn. And specifically the R9000 family of devices. Uh, what apparently happened here is that as part of the default login page, uh, you are using routerlogin.net. And Netgear did include valid signed certificates and private keys uh, with each one of their devices. This is of course a little bit of a difficult problem they're trying to solve here. You may have run into this problem because a lot of browsers now prefer HTTPS. It gets kind of difficult to log in to some of these captive portals and other admin gateways and such that don't support HTTPS. Of course, they do want to support HTTPS on their devices. And in doing so, they're using this router login.net domain, which has always, I believe, been used sort of as the default login page for Netgear equipment. And they just went uh, to Entrust and got a valid HTTPS certificate for this site. And of course, in order to use it on your router, they also have to give you a private key short of having any kind of meaningful TPM or so within this device, they do need to include the file. And everybody, of course, can pull that file out of the 
of firmware, they may be able to do a little bit of obfuscation, but that's about it. The real problem here is that this does not really just affect Netgear users, because this certificate is trusted by pretty much anybody short of it being revoked by now. The only part that makes Netgear users here more vulnerable is that they're more likely to go to routerlogin.net because that's a domain they're familiar with in order to adjust settings in their router. Well, that's it for today. Thanks again for listening. If you like this podcast, as usual, please tell your friends about it, uh, post on social media, and thanks for listening. Talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.